if you actually want something that you're going to be able to take to a table and people are going to go, you know, cool, uh, you, you know, you can have a nice army that maybe will be a lot more fun to play with, I think, than your yeah. unpainted, unprimed models. I mean, even if you just primed your models, there's a hell of a difference there. Yeah, it's always, you know, I mean, if you if you spend time painting your models and you've got a fully painted force, it, it, it must be awful to, you know, some guys just glued his, uh, glued his models together to the base or, you know, just even stuck legs to the base and that's it. Okay, so I've just added um, two or three daubs of uh, Goblin Green and one big dob of the of the Dark Angels Green and as you can see there is there is a difference there. This is the basic Goblin Green. So now we're going to dilute it and we want this to be reasonably runny. Skim milk or slightly less consistency again. And all we're going to do is we're going to imagine that the light is coming from above the miniature. So wherever the light, we, we think the light would fall, you know, in the crevices, that's where we put the, uh, put the shadow colour. A manual version of what 3D artists would call global illumination. Yep. So in the uh, in the crevices that run down here underneath the lip This basically gives uh, definition to the face because we've got quite ape like features. And under the cheekbone. Yeah, that'll do. Um, Furrow his brow. And again, we've left left the eyes alone. And they're quite finely detailed. These models, much more finely detailed than the uh, than the classic range. So the way they do the plastic models is they use a three up, which is about three times the size. That must be a hell of a thing to see, actually. Yeah, I saw some pictures of the Soul Grinder, the new Chaos 40k demon engine, basically a possessed defiler, mm -hmm. and it was the actual torso itself was massive. Yeah, I bet it was. It must so, have been quite huge. Yeah. So could I mean, have used it as a Chaos Titan, couldn't we? That, yeah, certainly. I mean, it must have been a good what. Eight, eight to ten inches tall. Then that was just on the body. Uh, don't worry about making mistakes. Um, you can always touch it up with the base coat, which is basically what I'm going to have to do. I'm making a, I'm making a couple of mistakes here because I'm. We don't make mistakes, though, do we, Rob? I'm. I'm Making some deliberate mistakes. Cause oh I'm, no no, we don't make mistakes. We make happy little accidents. <laughs> I'm making making a happy little accident, which is why I'm sitting funny. Uh, but you know, we can show the repair now with the orcs' arms. They're very muscular, so just in the grooves, basically, just painting shadows and. If you can see, that's adding some definition. I apologise to any viewers that it's slightly jerky here, but we are trying to get as close as we can here without 
balancing the camera literally on Rob's head. So. Yeah, I was all for the eyeball camera, you know, like the cool special forces head, head cam. However, unfortunately, the eyeball cam only exists in the game Cyberpunk 2020. Yeah, that was a bit of a bummer. Um, I'd like to apologise if I keep on moving the miniature out of shot. Yeah, however, you do have to move the miniature in order to paint it, unfortunately. Now, if we're going from the top down, we would paint shadow under the bicep because this would be this would be in shadow. Um, we can define the fingers and top there because that the arm is blocking the back of the hand. So we'll do a bit there. It looks a bit on the bottom of the hand. It looks a bit rushed. You know, but once we add... Well, this is very much a guide to making your tabletop army. We're not trying to win any golden demons here. Yeah. I mean, we're not really trying to make you so much a showcase model in that you're going to win awards for it. But you are going to have an army that's going to sit on the table and, with any luck, intimidate the Jesus out of your opposing enemy. I right, say, so you can see that there's a bit of an impression of volume already with the... The difference in shade, unless of course you're colour blind. No, no, I can actually see that, and I'm colour blind. Well, that's all right then. Um, so, the thing, my, I know my work especially, um, it always looks very scrappy until the end, which is unfortunate. Um, I'm not the neatest of painters. So, again, in the in the grooves, um, you know, that's hidden from the from the light above. In that groove around his wrist, the bottom of the tricep is is hidden. I was just about to take a hearty drink there from the paint water without realizing. I've I've done it many a time. Um, I normally normally drink a lot of coffee and I used to use mugs you know I had a I had an old mug that I used to use and the amount of times I uh, mm. leave my brush in the coffee and then took a big swig of dirty Save paint to the taste of Games Workshop paint yeah so but these are non-toxic um, like I say the new foundation paints don't taste very nice but they're not going to kill you no exactly and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger apparently Hmm. You know, I, I suppose there's no logic really in that whatsoever, isn't there? No. I mean, it could make you weaker over time, and then kill you. Yeah. Like being repeatedly hit with a stick won't kill you, uh, initially. So you keep telling me, but you know, you shouldn't hit me with a stick, it's not very nice. No. We have to do all sorts of things really to get our artists to perform quality work here at Private Up Studios. I'd like to point out Ian, he calls me an artist on camera. If he calls me off camera, he's very, very naughty. I'll uh, direct Rob's attention to the Prime It Up axe. You're a very, very nice man. That's so basically, better. that's the that's the first round of, of shading. Okay, I'll just... Uh... So it's... It is... A touch hard to see at the moment, um, but there is a, a bit of definition added. You can see it more clearly on the arms. No, it definitely does stand out. I mean, I can see it. Um, the face um, will will stand out a bit more once the uh, once the second layer of shadows has gone in, and uh, then we start the highlight. So I'll just clean this off. Okay, so now we're moving on to the Dark Angels green. This is the base coat for the Dark Angels Space Marines, and it's I think it's a really nice dark green colour. Uh, so And is this being used for a slightly darker highlight? Then? Yeah, right. it's just to provide a bit of differentiation between the shadows, a bit more visual interest. You don't have to, you can go straight to straight to the Dark Angels Green. If you want, mm -hmm. 